I, <laughs> I'm trying to think of what my father would say at this point, you're, and I, I think he would. Andrea, Andrea uh, you covered Dr. Brzezinski. You know Brzezinski my parents, for quite and some time. you know my father's strategic thinking. I'm, I'm scared to even try and put into words what his analysis of this would be. There was, you know, a lot of potential in this meeting and a lot of opportunity. Actually, my brother Ian wrote a piece uh, for the Atlantic Council on what, what positive could have come out of this. How do we describe the negatives here? It's really hard to describe. I was just thinking while you were talking, before you mentioned it, about Zvig and about what your father would be saying. At this point, and especially looking forward to the meeting with Vladimir Putin, I'm going to be uh, covering that for you all in Helsinki on Monday morning. We'll all be together again. And it's all going to be happening right during this, these hours, where he's going to be having a one on one meeting without note takers, without advisors. But I, actually, given the, the role that John Bolton and other advisors have played, I'm not sure that their being there would make any difference because that role of national security advisor, which your father occupied in the White House, is so critical. And now we understand why, why H.R. McMaster was fired because he could not have remained silent while this was going on. Yeah. And look, there is no one around this president who is willing to speak up to him. And, and that is what's so shocking. And I, I really wor worry about, about Defense Secretary Mattis, who is in Brussels. No, I do, and too. And he must be just gagging uh, I'm looking at Angela Merkel's uh, transcription here, the translation uh, to the comments that she made just moments ago. I've experienced myself a part of Germany, controlled by the Soviet Union. Hmm. I'm very happy today that we are united in freedom as the Federal Republic of Germany and can thus say that we can determine our own policies and make our own decisions. And that's very good. You know, Joe, let me ask you something. I, I am constantly and continually bewildered by the behavior of the President of the United States. Right. We just saw a group of children being rescued from a cave in Thailand. The world was thrilled to see it. And here in America, we are taking children from their parents. Right. Yep. Let's and the not mothers forget the separation the, policy. The children now no longer recognize their mothers when, when, when put together with them. Uh, we have a country where the President of the United States uh, is separating himself from the rest of the world, seemingly. Where are the voices here? Where, where are the people in public life who stand up and ask the question, Whose country is this? Is it Donald Trump's or is it ours? Well, the, we've talked about history and how historians will remember this moment. Uh, it's, it's hard, Mike. Every time something like this happens, it's hard to not turn to members of Donald Trump's own party. Again, Trump, a lifelong Democrat became a Republican when he figured out that racism, birtherism 2011 would help him win the nomination. But where are they? I, I know that they had a vote in the Senate. Fantastic. But I'll tell you, if I were there, I would be rounding up a group of people. We would go down to the White House or we would give a, a, give a, to do a press conference as Republicans in front of the Capitol defending NATO and calling out the president for his comments. Do you know how hard that is? Did it? It's not hard at all. And do you know what happens in your district? I found it. It helps you in your district. This is what I don't understand about these cowards. Every time I spoke out against my own leadership or against Democratic leadership, my poll numbers went up because people want somebody who speaks their mind. They want somebody who's independent. They want somebody who's not scared. These people are cowards. So, so now we we're at the point where they would rather lose the country than lose their own election. They are more concerned about what happens this fall mm -hmm. than they are with what's happening with What's happening with an alliance, again, that has made America the strongest, the most powerful, the most free country on the planet? Forget the fact that we have fed and freed more people 
than any planet, any, any country in the history of the world. Let's just be selfish about this. We have a $19 trillion economy. The post-war period has been defined as what? The, Amer the, Amer the American century, not the Luxembourg century or the <laughs> Brussels century or the French century. Because right. of what we have done in setting up this system, this post-war system, historians call this the American century. And you know what? Despite our political problems, still is. We still are the most powerful country in the world, militarily, yeah. by tenfold, twentyfold. We're still the most powerful economy in the world. And by the way, we were the day Barack Obama left office. Mm -hmm. We were the day George W. Bush left office. We were the day Bill Clinton left office. So why blow this apart unless you were trying to help Vladimir Putin? To go to something Mike just said, Donald Trump is the most vivid manifestation of the least attractive characteristics in the national character. We haven't been captured by Donald Trump. We have had our worst instincts affirmed, exacerbated, and put in front of the world. To, I think to su suggest that somehow or another he has hijacked the country lets the rest of us off the hook. Because right now, the kind of courage you're talking about is required not simply of people who are in elective office, but all of us. It's why conversations like this matter. Jefferson said men should be participators in politics, not at elections only, but every day. And the only way to get through this particular hour of crisis, and I think it is a crisis in the classic sense that we will know at the end of it whether the patient lives or dies, right. uh, which is the original meaning of the word, and it, the crisis is supposed to be that important. It's supposed to be a life or death matter, a health crisis, a health moment. The country has fully the capacity to do the wrong thing. The wondrous thing about the country is that at least 51% of the time, right. we have actually let those better angels win. We have opened the arms. We've dropped, we've Berlin, we've used the Berlin airlift. Right. We have, Colin Powell once said, you know, we've gone around the world projecting our power, and the only thing we've ever asked for is the ground in which to bury our dead. And Elizabeth, um Donald Trump is succeeding in uh, undermining the international American order uh, because uh, there is nobody in his own party pushing back at him. Uh, there's well, nobody in his cabinet pushing back at him. I saw a video a couple of days ago of a woman who put on a Puerto Rico shirt and was abused, uh, ra right. followed around God. by a racist right. while a cop just sat there and did nothing. That's what the Republican Party has done. It's, it would be very easy to intercede and step in and stop this. The Republicans just choose to well, not do so. They did. I saw Bob Corker said some things yesterday about NATO, and they did pass the resolutions uh, yesterday, I believe, uh, affirming support for NATO. I also wanted to talk, to address John Meacham when he talked about our better angels. You know, when we talked about this is about the separation of families. But I would like to note that um, because of the courts, who who said that uh, the the judge out in um, on the West Coast who said that uh, uh, the Trump administration can't hold families for more than 20 days, and because of the pressure from the public and the president's executive order, what we have now. With, with our immigration crisis is that families are, are being, it's, we're back to catch and release under, under the Obama administration. So I think that the things work in the country, that there, there is a, a system of checks and balances, however imperfect, because I think now with the, the families are not being separated. They're being kept together for 20 days, then they're being given court dates and being released into the country. Whether you want that or not, we were now back to what was the Obama administration considered a somewhat more humane policy. Yeah. So the bottom line here is I think that in some ways things are working in the country the way they're supposed to. Well, right now they have the official yeah. handshakes happening. And the Thanks for checking out MSNBC on YouTube. And make sure you subscribe to stay up to date on the day's biggest stories. And you can click on any of the videos around us to watch more for Morning Joe and MSNBC. Thanks so much for watching.